Good day, everyone. We thank the Lord that we could continue with our meditation of God and uh, prayer at this moment. And also, this is Pastor Bam who will be with you in the time to uh, contemplate on what God has for us. We will uh, continue our study in the book of Psalms in the 91st chapter. This is the second part of what uh, uh, we had last time. And I want us to focus on finding peace in the midst of problems. And may the Lord will continue to uh, bless our time of uh, contemplating upon His Word and directing our eyes, our focus on Him as we look at His Word. The Word of God would tell us here in verses 1 and 2, Psalm 91, He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You that we could continue with our meditation upon who You are and what You have for us in Your Word. And as we come to You in prayer, You are going, Lord, to give what we need, especially the strength, the peace in the midst of chaos, problems, turmoils in this life. Bless Lord your word upon our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a little review for what we had last time. We've uh, considered that uh, in finding strength, in, in, a, in a, uh, finding peace, we find it very interesting that instead of God giving us this and that, God gave us himself. God became our refuge. God became our fortress. He is the one. In himself, we will find safety and protection. Not only that is in person, but also God is giving us the assurance that he will be there for us. In the uh, verses that we find here in verses 14 in Psalm 91, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So I don't know where we are finding all the, the medicine for our ailing soul. God's prescription to each one of us would be himself. He will be, he will be our refuge. He will be our, our fortress. He will be our shelter. He will be with us during this time. Now aside from his presence, aside from his person, the Lord also have given us his promises. And we have studied that in verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, verse 10, verse uh, up to verse 13, that indeed nothing could ever touch us. God will never allow anything to harm us. God will see it through that he will both give protection to his children, to you and me and also safety as we continue to fulfill his will so now we've come to the point how how could i how could i get it how could i experience the presence of god how could i uh, assimilate how could i take all the promises that god has given me verse 1 would tell us that he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty now, the thing that we are going to do, because this is who God is, His person, His promises. What is your part? What is my part? What I'm going to do? The Word of God would tell us that we are going to dwell. He that dwelleth, he who dwells with God in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, you will find this very interesting 
It's because of all the uh, translations that we have right now. If you try to study the word, to find a word, what is really the meaning, what, what it means to dwell, I think without an exception, almost every single translation would still use the word dwell. You are going to dwell. He who dwells, he that dwelleth. So in other words, there is no better description of what we're going to do with God in order to find peace and strength than to dwell in Him. So if you're going to look at what is the meaning of the word to dwell as far as the hymn writer of Psalm 91 would tell us, or for those here in the Word of God in the Old Testament, what it meant to dwell. He that dwelleth in, in God, in the secret place of the Most High. What it means to dwell. Now first we find that to dwell means to, to stay. To reside, to abide, to make home. So this is the opposite of just a casual visit, just passing by, just spending a little time. But rather, this is about having a quality time with God, intimate relationship. We are cultivating this kind of relationship that is intimate, that is personal, that is close, that is sweet. This is the meaning of the word to dwell. So if I want to find peace in the midst of the problems, I need to spend time with God. If I want that my eyes would focus on the solid rock, I have to spend time on the God who is the rock of all ages. Sunday thing will never solve it. Just giving God an hour or two every week will never solve it. It means having His Word before we go to bed. Having His Word when we wake up in the morning. His Word that is going to stay in our hearts throughout the day. Of course, the meditation that we're talking of, about is the Word of God. The Word of God would reveal of who God is. That's why it's called meditation of God. Our meditation is on Him. It's not centered on any opinion or some commentaries, but it's really on who God is as He revealed Himself to us in His Word. We thank the Lord for the privilege that we could have every single night that we could meditate we could ponder. We could pause. This is what it means to dwell. This is what it meant when the hymn writer said, He that dwells, it means to recite, to make home. And by doing this, even the prophet Isaiah would admonish us in, in the 26th chapter, reading to you in verses 3 and 4, it says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, those whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusts in you, trust ye in the Lord forever, for he is the Lord Jehovah. He is your everlasting strength. So here the writer here of the book of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Isaiah would know how it is to find peace. Peace in the midst of problems. That there would be a solitude. Even though there is so much turmoil. Storms in life. Why? Because our mind is focused. Is stayed on Jehovah. And here the word of God would tell us. That those whose mind is stayed on Jehovah. God will keep us in perfect peace. So really, when we examine our daily lives, when we examine where we spend our time, 
Probably we spend so much time in reading the news. We spend so, so much time in many things that the attention is getting every minute, every moment that we have. I hope that we should pay attention to what God has to say in His Word. Our mind is focused, is staying on Him and not traveling. We are going to focus our mind, our hearts on our Lord Jehovah. And it says Him that thou will, He will keep us in perfect peace. So dwelling, it means finding peace in the midst of problem. We need to dwell. We need to stay. We need to focus. We need to, to sow our soul, our mind with the word of God. Constant exposure of ourselves, both thoughts and our intake of the word of God. Our thoughts, our meditations about God, of who God is. And by doing that, that is what the word of God would tell us on how to do that. But second, dwelling is not only staying, residing, making a home in God, but also dwelling means trusting. Look at verse 2, when the word of God would tell us in verse 2, that not only that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. In verse 2 it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. So we could never do away when we stay, when we reside, when we meditate, when we stay close with God. We're not just going to be there and just wonder. And just spend idle moments. And just do nothing. Really, this is an active way of placing our trust on the God who wanted us to stay with Him. Staying with Him, not only that we are dwelling, but also it also would connote the lesson that we need to do. It means trusting. You know, sometimes these days people would uh, would have this argument or would have uh, these things that they would consider. They would say, oh, you, you are not really getting uh, 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 what you need. The things that really that is happening, uh, it's because you have you have a little faith. I have a big faith. Look at me. Look, look at what I could do because I have such a big faith. But you know when Jesus talked about faith, he said, if you have a faith like a mustard seed, a mustard seed is not like a, a, a seed like my, my fist. A mustard seed is a very small seed. If you have a faith of this mustard seed, you could remove this mountain. That is what Jesus said. So here we see that it's not even the bigness or the smallness of our faith. It has something to do with the bigness of our God. So when we consider, or some of you may ask, what it means to trust in the Lord. We have already considered what it means to stay. Now, what it means to trust in the Lord. Now, the first thing that we considered about trusting is the object, the person whom you are trusting. As I as we have already said, that it's not the bigness or the smallness of our faith, but rather it's the bigness of our God. So now we're going to consider here the three names that is mentioned here in the book of Psalm chapter 91. Who God is? Who is this God that I am relying on? Who is this God that I am depending my all to Him? Who is this God? Now the first name that we find here in verse 1 it says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high his name here is introduced to us as the most high this is the name of god that would show that he is the god who is supreme he is above everybody else nobody surpasses him nobody comes to his level 
He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the the he he reigns supreme to all his creature, to everyone. So that's why when he is going to say that nobody could touch you, when he could say that he's going to protect you, nobody could come near to him. Nobody could touch us. It's because the Most High is the one who is protecting us. But not only that, that he is the Most High, but also it says here on, uh, on verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is, he is not only the Most High, the supreme ruler of the universe. Nobody could equal him. Nobody could surpass him. Nobody could hurt him. But also, he is Almighty. This would refer to his power. He is all-powerful. Anything and everything that he wills, he is able Nobody could stop him. Nobody could oppose him. He is the Almighty. Nobody is greater, stronger, mightier than our God. He is the Almighty God. You know, when we are going to pause for a moment, our, real, our reliances had been dependent on the things and the people who would falter and fail. No wonder our fate is so shaky but if our faith is founded on the god who is the supreme ruler of this universe the god who has all the power and he can do whatever he wanted to do and nobody could stop him then we realize that we are standing on the solid ground but you know what when you consider these two names of god this would bring so much dread, so much fear. No wonder in the Old Testament, the word trusting, believing in God also would mean the fear of the Lord. Because when we know that He is the Most High, He is the Almighty, who could oppose Him? Who could stop Him? Who could fight Him? It is so foolish to think that we are going to win when we are fighting against the will of God. Because we know that he is the most high. And he is almighty. As the modern expression would say. He is just simply so scary. You know when we think of that. The only thing that would save us from destruction. Because this God is most high and almighty is to come for, to him for mercy. Is to fall flat before him. And I think this is now what is wrong with this generation. We don't consider him as the most high, as the almighty God, as if that we're the one that is running our lives. We can do whatever we want. Whether there is God or there is no God, who cares? I'm the captain of my soul. No, he's the most high. He is the almighty. Nobody, no one could ever go against this God. But you know, if we're going to stop there, many of us would be trembling. Many of, God, many of us would be hiding in fear. But then thirdly here, he presented himself here. Look at, the, look at in uh, on verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. The word Lord here is also translated as Jehovah or Yahweh. This is the name of God, of the covenant God, the one who revealed himself to Moses. I am that I am. That is the root word for this Yahweh, this Jehovah, name of God. He told Moses, I came to send you to Egypt because I'm going to save my people. Why was he doing that? Because he is the covenant keeping God. He promised Abraham that he's going to take care of his people. That's why he came back and made it real to them that I am really the God who keeps my promise, my covenant. So let's, let's go back. When God is presented here in this chapter that he is most high, he is almighty, 
but he is also the covenant keeping God. Then we realize that all the promises here, nobody could destroy this. Nobody could ever say that is the true. God could not keep his promise. He is the most high. He is the supreme ruler of this universe. He is almighty. He could do whatever he wills he would do. He has all the power. But also he is the loving God. He is the caring God. He comes back with his mercy every single day. It's all because of his mercy. He is our God Jehovah. He is our God Yahweh. Who would never leave us nor forsake us. Where can we find peace? In the midst of our problems, we find it on our God, who is the Most High, who is the Almighty, who is the Jehovah. We place our trust on Him completely. Heavenly Father, bless your word upon our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for showing us not to live according, Lord, to what we see. Not, Lord, to have bouts of panic attacks, anxieties, fears, is because, Lord, we know that you are the Most High God. You are the Almighty God. You are the Jehovah God, the God who is not only promising us you will take care of us, but the God who will do what he has promised to do. Thank you, Lord, for this assurance. May we find peace in the midst of problems as we dwell in you, staying with you, trusting that you are the God who will see us through. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.